Hello and welcome to episode number 43 on the Online Trainers Podcast. Today's topic is, are you following through and are you doing the work? Hello and welcome to the Online Trainers Podcast, where we go behind the scenes to uncover the latest tactics and strategies top trainers around the world are using to get more clients, dominate their marketplace, and get their clients amazing results. There is absolutely no fluff here. I'm your host, Lynn Trin. Now, I've been reading a lot of Stephen Pressfield's work recently. The War of Art was one which completely changed the game for me. And, you know, for a long period of time, I was a dabbler. And I'm going to put my hand up firsthand going, right, I would get excited by a new project. I would leap into that new project. And then a few weeks later, when I hit what Stephen calls resistance, Okay, resistance meaning something that stopped me. I hit a brick wall, self-doubt. I ran an ad and it bombed out. I would stop. Okay, I'd get less excited by it and I would stop again. And, you know, it would drag on and the project might drag on for two, three months. And so, you know, and until I had this creative spark to jump into a new project, right? And for a long time, this was me. And I only want to share this with you because I really hope it helps you grow. Now, I was taking what Tony Robbins calls the root of dabblers. And what happens to dabblers is we as people, okay, um, we as people start a new idea, we start a new sport, okay, we start to gain momentum from it. Things are exciting because it's completely new. It's like we're going on a new date. Things are really exciting. You meet somebody, you're excited about them, sparks are flying everywhere, and then what do you notice three months, six months, 12 months down the track? With that same particular topic, things just start to become routine. You know, you don't progress forward. There's a lot of resistance. You start to plateau. Okay, for a long period of time, I was plateauing and I go back to my fitness journey, especially when I was creating my first flagship program, my first real online transformation program that I put out in a step-by-step course. And when I listened and I thought, okay, I need to create a flagship program. I was so excited about it. I wanted to do it. I wanted to go out and do the filming. I wanted to go out and get everything together. I wanted to learn the tech. And as you know, especially if you started out a project, things don't always go to plan. And for me, it was kind of going, okay, Well, I kept facing this thing called resistance, right? And if you're not aware of resistance, you're probably going to, I'm going to open up a new world to you today. And that's, that's the whole point of these podcasts, right? But resistance is anything that, that can hold you back. It's your fear of failure, you know, this fear of self-doubt, your beliefs, okay? You tell yourself that you're not good enough. For a long period of time, I was telling myself, man, I'm a personal trainer. I'm a coach. I'm not a, I'm not a web developer. I'm not an IT guy. And so, you know, by saying that, I already pinned myself into the wall and, and that belief was you know, very disempowering. And, you know, friends and family, Lynn, why are you working so hard? What are you trying to do here? I don't get it. Why don't you come out? Why don't you have more free time? And that's resistance as well. You know, Stephen Pressfield in The War of Art talks about these resistant curves and how they come up to stop you from achieving the success that you're meant to achieve. And it really comes down to, you know, a lot of the times when I look back, you know, I'm a great starter, I can get something off the ground. But for me, unfortunately, if I can't sustain that, you know, I wasn't able to sustain that. And the one shift that I needed to make, because for me, it took about 16 months to get my flagship program together. And now I'm helping personal trans Rail get it done in six weeks. But I overcome the resistance now, and there are a few ways that I want to share with you in this quick podcast episode today, just in case you're facing resistance, just in case you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, Lynn, look, I know that feeling of getting excited. You have to understand, I've launched probably over 85 different challenges from seven day challenges, 14 day, 10 day challenges, 28 day challenges prior to that to figure out really, to really test what's going on. At first, I didn't know I was testing, and then when I was when one challenge led into online personal training clients and I was able to generate revenue, I was like, oh, okay, this stuff actually works, you know? For a long time, I was like, oh, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. And then when I kind of, you know, was successful with one, I was like, oh, wow, this actually works. And so it gave me that belief that, holy crap, this stuff does actually work. And so what I needed to do was I needed to test and I needed to test why it worked and I needed to test variations and then I needed to test hooks. But... Every time I start a project now, I go into a few phases and what you'll notice about it, and and this is just to help me overcome resistance. And resistance is anything that's stopping you, that's holding you back, that you're procrastinating. You know, we all do something and, and I'm sure you've done something before where you've started a project and it's just there, it's half done. Okay, and Stephen talks about how things get half done, but they never get finished because 
you know, that's when fear and self-doubt and anxiety creeps in. And for me right now, it's it's been really good because I read this book last year and the mindset that I had to change was I had to go from becoming what was called a dabbler, a person who just kind of dabbles in everything. You know, you do a bit of CrossFit, you do a bit of strength training, you do a bit of fat loss training, you go on this diet, go on that diet, try another diet. And we know with the dabblers because most of our clients in the past were dabblers, right? And they'll try a hundred different diets. But to be fair, let's be honest, if they went all in with that diet and followed it to the T, they probably would have gotten some amazing results regardless of the diet. Of course, there are always a few exceptions, but that's really the same thing. What I was doing was I was dabbling from challenge to challenge to lead magnet to video series to webinar. Look, I tried webinars for a long time and right now it seems as though I've, I've started to get a lot of traction on it. So that will be saved for another podcast episode. But what I'm trying to tell you is I was jumping around and I was really never going in all in on the one and figuring out the strategy to make it work until this year alone. And the first thing I've had to change is really the mindset. Okay, the mindset of understanding resistance and understanding what dabbling is and understand what going all in is. Something that resonates with me and it might resonate with you depending on what type of personality type you have, what what your drivers are. If you've done the DISC profile, D-I-S-C, if you haven't done it, I'd highly recommend you to do it because it tells you what your values are, what your main drivers, what what your strengths are. And I think you can go on TonyRobbins.com forward slash U-E and you can check it out there like other companies will charge 100 bucks he gives it out for free just because he can but for a long time you know i was dabbling and mindset shift was the first thing i needed to burn the boats to take the island i needed to go look i'm not going to go back to that i'm not going to dabble anymore i'm going to go all in on this because i really feel even though i'm not a hundred percent sure because i truly think you can never be a hundred percent sure with anything okay you just have to create your own certainty within it Okay, and that's what I've come to realize that even though I don't know if it's my passion, I don't know if it's my purpose, I don't know if I really, really enjoy it, but I'm going to go, okay, well, that's the closest thing. I'm going to go all in with that. And what will happen is you'll make of it what you really enjoy. So I decided to go all in. And right now what I'm starting to see is I'm starting to see my passions flow within it. And with every new opportunity you take, with every door you open, another door will open, another door will open. But most people knock themselves out of the game before they even begin because they procrastinate on which door they're going to open. And what you have to understand is all the doors are good. It's just like all the diets are good. But it's all on you on how you decide to walk through that door, what beliefs you make out of it and whether or not you go all in. Okay, you're not standing half assed out here waiting to go on another door. So what are some of the things that really helped me change was the fact that number one, I changed my mindset. I went from rather than going and dabbling around, I decided to go through a door and I said, look, I'm going to make the door work for me no matter what. Okay. The second thing was whenever I created a program, I had a product or service, I became smarter about it. And I decided, hey, if I don't have momentum, to do this why don't I just why don't I just get people to keep me accountable so it was first my family colleagues and friends to keep me accountable and finish a project and they would die out soon too because they would of course you know they would have some motivation some days and others at other days they weren't getting paid for it but an idea that struck to me was running some sort of a prototype beta testing pilot testing beta version program where clients could get complete access to what I was offering for a completely cheap price, for 80% off, 90% off, right? But the good thing about this was that I was actually now getting paid to create a product and service, but also I was being kept accountable to finishing that product and service, okay? Because if you're looking for accountability, right, there is no better way than to get paid to do something and not follow through because you can't not follow through. Your integrity is there, ethics are there. You're like, I have to do this no matter what, you rock up. And so I used that pattern there as well as well as going all in to really get my stuff done. So a lot of the times when I'm releasing podcasts, when I'm releasing courses, when I'm releasing new programs, new workouts, whatever it is, okay, taking on new ventures or completing the book, I will try to look at, okay, who's, what leverage can I get on myself to follow through? That's the first thing. And am I willing to go all in? Now, if I'm going to go all in, I have to create the habits Okay, and the systems and the foundations around it, because the truth is motivation is what gets you started and habits what keeps you going. Now, it's good. It's all well and good to have motivation to get started. But 
what are the habits that I need to build to finish off my book? Or what are the habits that I need to build? And so with my book, I just spend every morning at the cafe writing, no matter what. And I'll write a page and I'm done. And I'll write a page and I'm done. And then I know that if I'm going to create a good book that's 200 pages, it will take me 200 days. And so that's the habits that I've kind of projected out on that system. Okay. But I want you to have a look inside your life and find out where are you dabbling at this moment? Is there a course that you've created that you haven't finalized? Is there a product and service that you want to create that you've got momentum for and you just haven't done? And if that's the case, what can you do now to use a pilot testing program, use a beta testing program, offer 80% of it off? I wouldn't recommend giving it out for free, but I would offer it at a very, very steep discount so that people have skin in the game. And when they have skin in the game, they're going to keep you accountable, okay? Okay. And have a look inside your life, your business, your product or your service and see where you can apply this to take massive action and grow and overcome resistance. Because I know, you know, if you're listening to this, you have something fantastic to create. You have a culture and a cult following that wants to follow you. All right. You want to create this kind of brand and tribe and you want to be the leader of the tribe. And that's what I want to try to help you do today. But the first step is taking action. The second step is following through. Okay. Yes, it's one thing to take action and you'll take massive action. The next thing is making sure you have the habits to follow through and then the accountability. Okay, and that's what I say that if you want to keep accountable, you need partners, you need people around you. And that's why I always recommend that you would go send this off to another personal trainer, spread the message and get each other to keep each other accountable. Okay, you want to keep them accountable and they want to keep you accountable. Because at the end of the day, we will do more for others than we do for ourselves. Okay, if you had a training partner in the gym, you would rock up to the gym for them, not for you, because you didn't want to let them down. And so that's the thing for your business. When you have an accountability buddy, you will do more for them. Okay, you'll do the business. It sounds really weird. You will grow your business because you want to show them. You want to impress them. You don't want to impress yourself. And that's one thing that I've learned to do as well. So start using these things to overcome resistance. And of course, share the podcast with another coach, another trainer. Okay. And start raising your standards. And if you enjoyed this podcast, let me know. I'd be happy to be able to chat more on this topic of resistance. And it's a really, really interesting topic. And I absolutely love it. So that is all for today. I will see you on the next podcast episode. All right. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave me a five-star review on iTunes. And feel free to leave a review in that way. I can respond and I can take that on board in developing content to serve you. Now, if you're not a part of the Online Trainers Club on Facebook, please do yourself a favor and be a part of the conversation. That's where I add daily tips, tricks, and strategies on how you can build out funnels, how you can get more clients, and ultimately become a better online coach. Thank you for listening. 